Hello, my name is Mike Ag, and welcome to my video covering the menu strip control, which is part of my series on Windows programming with C Sharp. Like I said before, uh, this part of the series focuses on things like menus uh, and, and toolbars and things like that. Um, and there's not really a, a menu control more widely known than the menu strip control. Uh, if you've used Windows or you know even Linux and, and Mac, uh, you're all probably pretty familiar with the menu strip control, even if you didn't know that's what it was called. For instance, I'm in Visual Studio right now. If I come up to the top here and I see all these options, this is a menu strip control, right? Uh, that's where our file uh, open and you know, save and edit and preferences. And these are all part of a menu strip. And we can see how to add those to our own programs. Now to add a menu, uh, I have my form here selected. I'm going to come over to my toolbox. And I'm going to scroll down to the section that which is menus and toolbars. And I am going to find the menu strip. When I double click it, we get a menu strip added to our program. And I'll just run it before I do anything. And we see just kind of a different shade of gray. Alrighty, and there's nothing in there, but that is our toolbar. Or I'm sorry, not our toolbar, our menu strip. And so we can do some of the classic programming. Uh, for instance, if I, uh, well, there's a drop down here. I'll, let me show you. If I click there, I have some items. I have menu item, I have a combo box, and a text box, and we'll look at all of those. What I'm going to do is I'm simply just going to type in there and I'm going to hit file. All right. And I have file added. Okay. Now let's add another one. I'm going to click right beside it. And I'm going to say about. All right. And so now we can see, if I run this, we have file and about. They don't do anything, but we have them. All right. Uh, and so that's basically just how we create our top levels. And this menu strip can have many levels. All right. Uh, so by clicking on file, I can have a whole bunch of things under file. And the items under file can have things under them as well. So if I were to say click on file just once, all right, you'll see that I get this little drop down where I can type in here. All right, and I'm going to do exit, just like that. All right, uh, and so now when we run it, we see file exit. All right, uh, now to add some code to this, let's say I want exit to exit my program, it functions just like a button or anything else. If I do file and then I double click on exit, I get a code behind. This time it's exit tool strip menu item click event and I'll just say this dot close and I run it and I go file exit and my program closes I could also double click on about about and do message box dot show this is my about something like that and then we can see this is my about okay file exit All right so already we can create some pretty complex menu systems here um, you know, that, that, that mirrors a lot of the functionality you're already fairly used to. Okay, so let's look a little bit further at some other stuff we can do now. Another thing you might be used to are things called alt keys or hot keys. All right, and I'll show you what I mean. If I come down here to file and I'm going to create a new item and that's going to be new. I'm just going to rearrange these here. There we go, just like that. So we have file, oops, file, and then either new or exit. If I click here again to edit new, and I put ampersand new, and I'm going to come here to edit, or exit, and I'm going to do the ampersand right next to the X. All right, let's see what happens. Now we see this underline by the N, this underline by the X. Those are our alt keys or our hot keys. They enable us to use the keyboard to select menu commands. So now when I run this and I hit alt, you can see the file gets highlighted and I can use my arrow keys. If I hit the down arrow, we get, the, get these here, but I can also just choose to hit, say right now I'm gonna hit the X button. You can see X is underlined there. I'm gonna hit the X button and it will exit my program. All right, so I'm just using the hot keys to navigate that in case I don't have a mouse or I'm in the middle of operation and my mouse stops working for whatever reason, uh, that gives me the ability to keep working. All right, so uh, those are what you call alt keys or hot keys, and the way to get those is just put the ampersand next to the letter that you want. Obviously, you can't have two items in the same menu uh, with the same alt key or hot key or else it wouldn't know uh, how to use those.
All right. So let's look at some other stuff we can do. Uh, so if I click here on file, oops, I didn't mean to double click. Let's just uh, come back here. Uh, and I hit the drop, instead of just clicking here to type, I'm gonna hit this drop down and I have some items. Well, first off, I'm gonna do a separator. All right, the separator's just a line, just for formatting. There we go. Makes it, I don't know, prettifies it a little bit. I'm gonna hit this down over here. We also have menu items, what we've been using. We can also do combo boxes and text boxes. I'll try text box here. All right, and if we run it, we can see there's a text box that I can type into. Uh, usable just like your normal text box, so anything you might want to do with that, we can do with that. All right. I'm also going to add a combo box. And that adds a combo box there. And the combo box, um, oops, I didn't mean to go, to go behind again. The combo box is where we can have a drop down of a whole bunch of different items that we can add to its collection. All right. Um, so, well, here I'll show you what I just did there. So I have the combo box selected. And over here in the properties, I see items and I see collection. If I hit the dot, dot, dot next to it, um, I can click it. And here we have a line. And I'm going to do Mike, John, Chris, Carl, Charles. All right. And I'll hit OK. And now I'll run it. And I'll go File. And here's my drop-down box. And I can select from this drop-down box. All right, so a lot of neat stuff you can do with that. Uh, gives you a lot of flexibility as far as menus are concerned. It allows us to create some pretty cool interactions with our program. I could also do, um, like by new, if I click on new, I could do new file or new folder. You know, we can create multiple levels of dropdown. File, new, file. You know, you can see, you just keep going with it um, to create our menus. As we saw, double clicking on any of those brings up our click event, uh, so that allows us to get in there and, and do any interactive coding we may want to do, and plug values in, you know, and, into what we need to do in the code uh, for that. All right, so a couple more things I want to talk about. One is adding images or icons. Uh, if you're familiar with, like, say, if I come up here to file, and you can see there's the icon next to save and the icon next to save all, we can do the same thing. Now, right now, I don't have any icons in my, my project solution. Um, if I had uh, one saved locally, I could use that. I can also use Visual Studio to create my own icons. All right. Uh, so again, if I come here to image and I hit the dot, 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 um, I have the option to load one from a, a local resource. Uh, but in this instance, I don't have one yet. So let's look at using Visual Studio to make one. Uh, if I come over here to my project, and I'm going to right click and go to add new item, and I'm going to scroll down until I find an icon file. All right, I'm just going to leave it with a generic icon one. And we come here to this really simplistic editor that Visual Studio has. It's nothing too fantastic. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, we'll just give, let's see here, we'll just give the, make the background reddish there. and. So we know it was, and this one will be black. We have a couple different sizes here. You can see we have 16 and 32 bit sizes. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that and we'll close it. And now back here on my new, I'm going to go to my image property, hit the dot, dot, dot. I'm on a local, or grab a local resource and hit import. And then in, this is just Windows Forms application one. I didn't give it a, a classy name or anything. If I come out in here to all files, I see icon one and I'll hit open, I'll hit OK and there we go. And so now when I run it, you can see I have my custom icon next to new there. All right. And so we can use that to load custom icons and use them for our menu strip items. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the, the, um, the shortcuts. All right. Shortcuts are a lot like hotkeys, only they work even if the menu isn't currently open. Uh, you should be familiar with shortcuts like in, uh, uh, I believe, pretty much every operating system. Like Control C is a copy, Control V is a paste, Control X is a cut, um, things like that. Uh, so what we can do is we can assign our own shortcuts to do things. Now, I caution you against using Windows shortcuts in your program. For instance, don't use Control C, don't use Control V. Uh, your program may not work as a result. Uh, or it may work, but your shortcuts may not work. All right, so 
it's just not a good idea. Um, I'm sure you can find listings for Windows shortcuts on the internet. Uh, just don't use any Windows shortcuts. So uh, let's create a shortcut here for exit. All right. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to locate the shortcut key. Um, oops, no, shortcut, yeah, this one right here. Shortcut keys, not the shortcut key display string. Shortcut keys, right now says none. I'm going to click the down arrow. And I'm going to pick, uh, to close my program, I want to do Control Shift uh, X. Control Shift X will be my shortcut key to exit this program. And now you can see it shows you right here on the menu. So if I run it, and I go file, you can see what the shortcut key is. I'll click away from there, and I'm going to hit Control Shift X, and my program exits. It recognized my shortcut key and got out of there. All right. So this video, we talked about uh, uh, adding items to a menu strip control. Uh, we talked about uh, hot keys or alt keys. We talked about using text box, combo boxes, menu items, and separators. Uh, we also talked about adding an image to the menu strip item, and we talked about shortcuts. In the next video, we will be looking at context menu strips.